Today we're gonna to be making this and teach you the very, very basics of Illustrator. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dread Labs and I'm a graphic designer. If you are new to Illustrator but you have been checking my channel for a time now, that might mean that you are already an experienced designer but you've never touched up an Illustrator before. People just sometimes start off with Photoshop or any other software and then never really turn back to Illustrator. And I actually was the same as you. Thing is however, Illustrator is a very very powerful tool and learning how to use it properly can actually really up your design game. So in today's video I wanted to show you the very basic principles of Illustrator while making this that you can see on the screen right now along the way. Before we hand it to the video, this video will be the part one of a series where I go over the very first basic illustrator but the second episode will be a patron exclusive. The first episode that you're watching right now will always be available for free on my YouTube channel. As you might know thanks to my patrons I'm actually able to give you guys free videos on a weekly basis but in order to do so I need to do Dreadlabs full time and thanks to my patrons I'm actually able to do that. By becoming a patron you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials, a 15% discount in my asset web store, an exclusive role in the Dreadlabs community server and if you go one tier up you'll also get access to exclusive tutorials such as part two of this video series. If you want to become a patron, there's a link down in the description, but if you don't have the budget, of course, that's completely fine. Leaving a like, subscribe, and a comment on this video will help a lot already. So with all of that being said, let's jump into the video. First off, let's talk about the main difference between Photoshop and Illustrator. While Photoshop is pixel-based, Illustrator is vector-based. And besides being a character from Despicable Me that looks a lot like Oliver Tree, vector is actually something else. Essentially, vector images can scale up to any size without it getting pixely or, you know, glitchy. You've probably seen this when you open a photo in Photoshop and you scale it all the way up. The photo gets a little bit blocky. That's not the case with vector images. You can imagine that this can be really really useful when doing a logo because your logo might need to be printed on a very large surface such as a building or a bus or you know whatever. You've maybe tried before to make a logo on that size in Photoshop before and you might have seen that your project files will get probably really really large and maybe your Photoshop even starts lagging a little bit. That's not the case when you're doing this in Illustrator though. There is however of course also a drawback to Illustrator and that's where Photoshop was the better tool and that's basically where you can do a lot of more effects on pixel based layers. For example, you can just edit colors of photos and stuff like that. You can also do that kind of in Illustrator, but it's a little bit more of a workaround compared to how easy it is in Photoshop. And with this, I mean stuff like adjustment layers and the filter gallery in Photoshop, for example. Anyways, now that you know the main difference between Illustrator and Photoshop, let's dive into actual Illustrator stuff. In this video series, I wanted to create a rave artwork, and while doing this, I wanted to showcase the very first basic tools that you might want to learn about when doing Illustrator for the first time. So let's start out with going to File, New, and we'll make a new template based on 3000 by 3000 pixels. As you can see here on the screen, you can change the size here and here. Uh, we're gonna need the color mode to be an RGB, basically because we're not gonna be printing this anytime soon. And this also gives a more accurate, clear uh, representation of the colors on our screen. The rest of these settings are pretty straightforward, and if you're familiar with Photoshop, you probably know about a lot of these already. So let's just click on Create. One more thing about Illustrator is because it's vector based, most of the artworks that you will be making in Illustrator are more shape or illustration based. For example, I use Illustrator to lay out the main baseline of my artworks most of the time. Let's start out with the basic shape tools and the selection tools. The basic shape tools let you create a basic shape, of course, by dragging over your canvas. For example, if we click here on the rectangle, we can just draw out different rectangles. As you can see, if we click and hold on the rectangle tool, you can also see that we have a rounded rectangle tool, an ellipse tool, a polygon tool, a star tool, and a flare tool. I don't really use the flare tool, but the other ones are pretty cool. For example, if we click on the ellipse tool, we can just draw ellipses. So if we wanted to move these, we can just click on the selection tool here. That's the top one and it's the darker arrow. And if we just click on one, you can see that there's a border around it and we can just move these around. By clicking and dragging, we can select multiple shapes like this. And for now, we want to delete these, so we can just press delete on our keyboard. If we go back to the shape tool, let's go to the rectangle. If we click once on our screen, you can also see that the window pops up and in this window we can basically type in how large we want our rectangle to be. For example, let's start out by making a rectangle that's 2000 by 2000 pixels. There's also another way to create a perfect square by the way and that's by clicking and dragging and then holding shift on your keyboard while dragging this out. You can also create a shape from the center and that's by holding alt or option on your keyboard as you can see. So now basically the point where we started clicking is in the middle here and we can also combine these two shortcuts. So if we hold alt and shift Basically, we're creating a perfect square from the center. This is also the time to talk about a very, very nice feature of Illustrator, and that's the Smart Guide. Let's get the ellipse tool back in. And the cool thing is, I could make a perfect circle that would fit perfectly within this rectangle. If we hover over our uh, path here, you can see that text starts popping up. We can see anchor and we can see path. And if we hold our mouse over anchor and we click and drag, we're going to go to the other end. 
if we see anchor again, basically we now have a perfect circle inside a rectangle. If you're not seeing this, this is supposed to be turned on when you first start Illustrator. But if it's not, you can go to View, Smart Guides. We can see that there's a blue outline around our ellipse. And that basically means that our ellipse is selected. If we want to deselect something, we can go to Select, Deselect, or press Ctrl, Shift, A on our keyboard. Now let's talk about appearance a little bit in Illustrator. And I'm gonna immediately sh tell you a rule and you should write this down somewhere because this is the most important rule and it was really frustrating for me to learn it. And that's if you're doing something with Illustrator, you got to select it to affect it. And I'm really serious about this guys. This is something that really frustrated me when I was first learning Illustrator. Of course, we can see here in the left corner here, we have a white foreground and a black stroke. So this is not the same as in Photoshop where we have a background color, but we have a fill and a stroke. And I'm gonna immediately demonstrate what I mean by selecting it to affect it because if we double click on the color here we get the color picker and we can change our color to red but as you can see nothing no shape that we already drew actually changed the fill color to red and that's because we didn't select anything let's go back we'll grab the selection tool we can also grab the selection tool by pressing v on our keyboard and let's click on the ellipse here and now you can see there's already the blue selection around our ellipse again and the fill color is still set to white so if we double click on here we can change it to red. Something that I have open a lot of the times is the properties window. And the properties window is for me is up here. If you cannot find it, it's under window properties. If we take a look at that, that's actually a really, really useful uh, window that you can use. And especially when you're still learning Illustrator, you can see that the appearance is here and it says that we have a red fill and a stroke of one point. This is also where we can change the color of the uh, stroke as well. So we'll change that to green. And it's a little bit, it's not really visible. So let's just make the stroke a little bit larger by clicking the up arrow and as you can see the green stroke is getting bigger and bigger here. you can also see that there's a lot of other properties here such as the position the size and there's also the alignment chart so it's a really good practice to keep this window open at all times because in my experience you're going to need it a lot uh, for now what we can also do for example is change the 21 points of this stroke to zero and as you can see, there starts to be a red line through here. And that basically means that we don't have a stroke around our shape now. So we don't have, we only have a fill. Okay, so these were the very, very basics, but I don't want this video tutorial to be just one that I showcase a couple of tools and show you, okay, this is the tool and this does this thing. I actually want to show you a demonstration of how I use these tools to create this artwork that you can see on the screen right now. In this first episode, we're gonna be reaching out to something like this. But if you join the Dreadlabs Patreon, you'll get access to all of the videos, which ultimately lead to you be able to creating this. And if you follow along you will be able to recreate this in the first day of doing illustrator we might not be able to cover every single tool in illustrator in this video but there should be a decent amount of tools where you can uh, learn these know what they're doing and then experiment with them yourself so let's start with some more complicated colors and fills for this artwork we're going to create a psychedelic painting feeling and in order to do that we need some more complicated colors and fades essentially we don't want flat colors only so let's start by creating a background and we're going to do that with the rectangle tool so let's go back here Hold our mouse over the ellipse tool so that we can click on the rectangle tool and we're going to draw out a rectangle over our complete artboard so with the smart guides turned on we're going to make sure that our uh, mouse is holding over the edge here and where it says intersect that's actually where the corners or the edges of the artboard are intersecting and let's draw out this rectangle here all right so if we take a closer look at the stroke and fill menu on the left here you can see that there are actually a couple of more options at the bottom here we have the fill color we have a gradient but we have nothing and we already saw what the nothing did on the stroke if we remove that there won't be any fill on this shape remember our shape is still selected you can see it around the blue edges around our shape here it's a little bit hard to see right now so for now let's double click on the fill color and we'll change this to a nice orange color and something else that we want to do is remove the stroke as you can see we have a black stroke here and if we want to affect that basically what we can do is click on this button here and as you can see the stroke is now behind the fill color if we press x on our keyboard the stroke is now in the front and that basically means if we now are changing anything in this menu we are affecting the stroke instead of the fill and because we want to remove the stroke let's click on the icon here that we saw when we did put the stroke size to zero this essentially removes a black line around our orange square right now and now if we go back we can press x on our keyboard again to make sure that the orange is in front of our stroke here all right so like we said earlier in the video we want to have multiple colors in this and we cannot achieve that with a solid color so we need a gradient and a gradient is basically a fade between two colors or more colors so the way we can achieve that is going to this menu here and instead of going to none we can click on gradient as well and this will create a black to white fade as you can see when doing this the gradient window should automatically pop up as you can see on the right here right here but if you cannot find it you can go to window gradient so what we can do right here is basically change the colors to create a more psychedelic look so let's 
grab the gradient window and we'll separate it a little bit so we can have it in the middle of our screen. And essentially, we gotta still remember we got the selected to affected. So make sure that your square is still selected. Otherwise, you're not gonna change anything here. But if we click here on the white color, we double click. We get an option window where you can change the color here. Also, if this is just black and white, you can also click on here and click on RGB so you can change the colors in RGB mode. So let's click on a nice orange and we'll double click on the black here and we'll make a nice yellow maybe like that. So we can also rotate our gradient to make it horizontal. So we can just click on 90 degrees. As you can see, the yellow is now at the top and the orange is now at the bottom. Maybe we'll make this a little bit more red like this. All right, so now we're actually done with the background. We can just deselect the square here. So we're gonna go to deselect, deselect, or you can also just use the shortcut, of course. And we can just click away the gradient window. I'm just gonna place it back here, close this off. All right, so let's take a look at the text tool next. You've already probably guessed it, but the letter T in our toolbox is actually the text tool. And just like in Photoshop, you can create text in two ways in Illustrator, by clicking one somewhere, you can actually type out, and this will just create an endless string of text but you can also draw out a rectangle which creates a box of text. So for me, we're gonna just do a title so we can just delete the box of text and we can just grab our text tool and click one somewhere and let's type out some text. So I'm just gonna type out Dreadlabs and we're just gonna click on the selection tool again and we're gonna scale this up. So with our mouse holding over this, you can see that there are a little a couple of multiple arrows appearing. We wanna have this arrow where it's like going to the upper left or the upper right. And if we just click and drag, we can scale up our text. And while holding shift, we can also just keep it in place so that the ratio will stay the same. And the font that I've been using is called HWT Arabesque. And if you have Adobe CC, which you probably should, you can get this font for free on Adobe Fonts. Just like shapes, text objects can also have a stroke and a fill. With our text selected, we'll make sure that our title is set to the center. And if we click and drag this, we should be able to center it in the middle here. The character menu is should be at the top here. And if you click on it, we can also click on the double T here, which basically creates our text so that it will be in all caps lock. Another way you can align your text is going to the properties window. And if we scroll down, we should be able to see this alignment window. With our text selected, we're gonna make sure to click on what we want this to align to. So we wanna align this to the artboard. And now we can just click on the vertical align, for example, and the horizontal align to make the text align with your canvas. So let's align this to the top here, like this. And let's select our text one more time and we'll give this a nice color. Double click here. And we'll make this a nice, maybe like a darker orange. All right, so we're gonna do a quick repetition of what we did so far. And we're gonna do that by making another square with a rectangle inside here. And we're gonna repeat some aligning. So let's grab the rectangle tool here. And we're just gonna go and draw out a nice rectangle and we're going to make sure that we're holding shift to actually keep this as a square and with this selected we're going to go to the properties window and we're going to click on the horizontal and the vertical alliance so that's perfectly in the middle we're going to give this a nice gradient like this and if the gradient doesn't when it doesn't open you can also find it here like i said earlier and for now, what I'm going to do is actually make a more complicated gradient. Because as you can see, there are multiple colors in this gradient on the example file right here. And we can actually just do that by dragging in colors. And if we click somewhere, I'm going to make a new color. So let's start by making a nice darker green. And let's change this to use saturation and brightness. So you can desaturate the green a little bit. And maybe we'll drag this a little bit more towards the blue. Like this. And maybe we'll need a nice red in the middle here. So... Saturate it a little bit more, drag it over to the red. All right, so now we have four colors here. And as you can see, it's very easy to just create a custom gradient, but you can probably see that our text is behind this rectangle right now. If we open up the layer menu, which you can find under window layers, you can actually click open this button right here. You don't need to worry if you don't see the layer one here. That's just something that I made here. Uh, that's our reference file. But you can see that there's a rectangle, our text and another rectangle. And we can just simply grab this one and click on it once so that's highlighted and then drag it down. You can also select an object, right click, go to arrange and then bring to front, bring to back or send forward and backward. So for now, for example, we would click on bring to front to create our text here and bring it to the front of everything. So the last thing we need to do is grab our text, drag it down. If you want to move something in a just one direction without like being afraid that it will might decenter, as you can hold shift while dragging up and down. As you can see, it will just stay in the same place. So for now, let's drag it down a little bit. We can also just make this a little bit smaller. So probably like a size of 400 will be okay. And we'll make the color a little bit lighter. 
like this. All right, looking good so far. Now let's create something a little bit more complicated than just a primary shape. And I'm actually gonna demonstrate this off canvas because you can also just go out of our canvas and then just draw and make stuff there. So the most common way to uh, create more intricate shapes are the Pathfinder and the Shape Builder tool. So let's create, for example, two squares here. And let's say that we wanna have like a corner uh, rectangle. As you can see, we just have these overlapping rectangles. And what you wanna do is go to Window, and then Pathfinder. And this brings up this little menu right here. Essentially what this can do is like, for example, if we wanna move one of these squares, but we wanna see this as one shape, we can, as you can see. So what we can do is select both of our squares here. And with the Pathfinder, we can do all kinds of stuff. For example, we can just merge these together with the Unite button. And as you can see, this is now one rectangle. Another thing that we can do is re minus front. So as you saw, we first made this square and then we made this square. And if we then click on minus front, this will just punch out the front rectangle into the back rectangle. Next, I'm gonna make a couple of ellipses. And let's just grab the Shape Builder tool. This is something that is a little bit easier for, uh, to use. I think it's a little bit more user-friendly. So select all of your uh, ellipses. And as you can see, we can see where the lines are. Essentially, with the Shape Builder tool, which is over here, you can also grab Shift grab by using Shift M on your keyboard. You can see if we hover over a certain part of a shape, uh, this will highlight. Cool thing is, we can merge these if we click and drag. So if we click and drag here, You'll see that this is now one shape. So let's say that this is the actual shape that we want and we don't really need these excess shapes. What we can do is hold Alt on our keyboard and as you can see, the plus icon on our mouse will change into a minus icon. Now if we click and drag over all of the rest of these shapes, it will just be trimmed off. And this way you can actually create some really cool intricate shapes in a matter of seconds. Another way to create intricate shapes is by using effects in Illustrator. For example, let's just make a square right here. And what I'm gonna do is use distortion effects. So if we have our uh, square selected, we can go to effect at the top menu, go to distort and transform. And for example, we're gonna use the zigzag. So let's adjust the size accordingly. And as you can see, this will increase a zigzag effect on our square here. You can also change this to a smooth zigzag as you can see. We can also change the amount of rides per segment. So if we up this to an uneven number, we can actually get a pretty cool shape here. And if we want to apply the changes, let's click OK. And let's navigate back to our canvas, which I'm doing by holding the spacebar. And as you can see, while holding the spacebar, our mouse changes into a hand. And if we click and drag, we can just change our viewport here really easily. Let's grab the selection tool and we'll drag in our newly created shape to the middle here. Something that we can see, however, if we have our shape selected, you can see that it's still actually a square. It's not the, the shape is not going around here like we saw when we using the Shape Builder tool. But don't worry, we can actually change that by going to Object, Expand Appearance. As you can see, now the actual blue line goes over the actual shape here. So if we would like to scale this up, what we can do, of course, is grab these outer arrows and we can change the scale. We also learned that we can just scale this up by holding Alt on our keyboard or Option if you're on a Mac. And now we can scale this in fr uh, from out the center. And if we hold shift with it, we can actually still keep this as a square. All right, so now we have this so far. So what we've covered so far are the basic shapes, the text tool, strokes and fills, and the properties window, and selecting something and moving it around. So these are the very, very basics of Illustrator. And in the next video, we're going to continue using a couple of more tools and shortcuts in order to make your workflow a little bit easier for yourself. Like I said earlier in the video, eventually we'll be working towards creating something that you can see in the left artwork, but it's actually a lot to process and do all in one video. And of course, it's also a little bit hard for me to record everything in one sitting. So that's why we're going to end up the video right here here and the next episode we're going to continue this on our patreon like i said earlier in the video so i'm not going to repeat all everything about patreon that i said earlier in the video if you want to check out the second episode there's a link down in the description but for now i hope this free tutorial gave you a little bit of more insight in the very basics of illustrator and i hope that this encouraged you to start learning illustrator if you've never touched it before because it's not as intimidating as some people say it is hopefully you'll consider watching the second episode but for now thank you so much for watching this is tom from Redlabs tuning out and i'll hopefully see you guys in the next video